Good morning to you. As you can see, I'm uh, down here at the sea. Um, it's a bit of a silver grey day today, but um, it's not too cold and it's not too windy and I trust you can hear me. Looking out there to the north is an area called Galston. Um, you can just about see it there in the distance. And down there to the south, I don't know if you can see the windmill. It's actually the largest wind turbine in the UK. That's in Lowestoft. And this area here is known as Corton Beach. And uh, you can see the backdrop here of the little green hills. So it's quite a comfortable place to sit. And uh, I'd like to this morning just share one passage of scripture with you. And I've noticed in the comments very often that people say that there's no such thing as the Trinity. And they say the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. Well, that's maybe true, but when we look at um, the passage in John chapter 17, uh, I don't think there's any disputing the fact that the Godhead, this is probably one of the best chapters in the whole Bible, really, that actually highlights and describes and explains the triune, if you want to call it that, Godhead of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And... Um, I just think there's beauty in this chapter and I'd like to just share some of it with you. Well, let's just see how the Lord leads. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. It's interesting that, isn't it? That there's a, there's a set number that God only alone knows, that the Father alone knows. And when those are all in, and as I've said before, the door of the ark will shut, that those that have put their trust and faith in him can know that they will be safe with them and their families and their friends who also have put their trust in him. Jesus goes on in verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. See there, Jesus is already alluding to the fact that he's co-equal with the Father. That they may be known together. In verse 4, he says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. There you see, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus there saying that he had the same glory as the Father, and they were both together before the world even existed. The pre-existent Christ. And they both had the same glory. Verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. You see, everything Jesus has, the Father has. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. See, Jesus made it very clear, didn't he? He didn't come just on his own accord. He was sent by his Father. In verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. See, there's that special, um, that special place of belonging that we have as members of the body of Christ. Jesus is even distinguishing here that he's praying specifically for us. And all are mine, sorry, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Again, Jesus speaking of 
his equal glory with the Father. Everything the Father has belongs to Jesus in equal measure. Verse 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. There Jesus again speaking of his co-equality with the Father, completely one with him. While I was with them, verse 12, in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Interesting thought there, just as an aside, that we look sometimes again for the escape. And Jesus is saying here that they must remain in the world, but yet they will be kept from the evil. The Lord will distinguish between the evil and the good and keep our souls. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. In that, you see, we have a, a co-experience with Jesus that we too are aliens and strangers here on earth now because he's put his spirit inside us. Sanctify them, he says in verse 17. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. See, we have that commission. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. There's the future, isn't it? Jesus there is thinking of us. We were in his mind 2,000 years ago that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Isn't that wonderful? Safe in that pouch. You know, I was thinking of the kangaroo with the pouch with its baby in it. A natural hiding place for that baby. And Jesus here is saying that we too can be hidden with him and the Father. Verse 22 says, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Just think about that. The very glory of the, of the Godhead has been given to us. And he says that they may be one even as we are one. Remember what Jesus said to Philip, I and my Father are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, he says in verse 24, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Here Jesus is alluding to the Holy Spirit, isn't he? He says, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. It's the Father's love that has, who has loved the Son, and he has put that love within us by his Holy Spirit, that we may be one in them. What a fantastic unity. 
There is actually another scripture that verifies so clearly the Godhead. And it's in John chapter 14. It just comes to mind now, which I'll also share, just adding to this. From verse 7, Jesus says to Philip, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto them, Have I not been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And he goes on in verse 13, and he says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I'm just dropping here to verse 16. And I will pray the Father. You see, Jesus speaks to the Father, and he says, The Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you knoweth him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you see jesus is saying here i will come to you in the form of the comforter from the father couldn't be clearer than that could it so we see Jesus' intent for us is that we can be completely and utterly comforted, completely within him. That's why it says in the Psalms, doesn't it? Whom shall we fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. There is nothing to fear, nothing at all. We serve a great God, and he's a God that we can trust a God that will never let us down at any time. I hope that that scripture speaks to your heart and that if you have any questions about the Trinity, what we call the Trinity, or Godhead, that you will realize that whether it's three in one, one in three, however we want to understand it, God knows that one day He will be able to, to reveal himself to us in his glory and we will then understand. So uh, I pray today that your day is a blessed day and that um, you will experience the comforter. Sometimes we, we suffer, don't we, because we, we look away from the Lord and um, our trust sometimes seems to dip. But he knows the end from the beginning. And remember, Jesus prayed for those that, that the Father had given him you've been given into his hands if you trust in him you can be assured that he'll bring you to the place of glory have a good day